everyone so welcome back to the AUB channel um yeah as well vlog two today i'll just chat more about my fmp some things that i've been doing some things that have changed and yeah just generally how my week's going so stay tuned <laughs> so my week has kind of changed in the sense that i've moved rooms um i'm now in my like the my family's spare room because it's just it's easier um the walls are white and, and the sun gets in really nicely, more so than it does in my bedroom, so um, it's it's better for a happy mood, I guess. So the other thing that's changed is the navigation of my project. Um, I'm now looking at the past, the present and the future of how we communicate, um, which I think is obviously at the core of being a, a graphic designer, if not just a designer in general. Um, like, we're taught to design to communicate um, to a wide range of audiences, like that's the purpose of our course. So from that, I've looked into the past of how we used to communicate. So going back to like Egyptian times, if you can see on my little timeline that I've got going on. Um, yeah, in the Egyptian times, we used to use cuneiform, which is the marking of letters into clay tablets. And it was usually used for trade. So uh, when things would come in, you'd, you'd have to mark it off. But then when different items were coming in, there wasn't a different symbol for that. So then that's how symbols and glyphs developed. And then obviously we got letter forms from that. Um, yes, yeah, so that's obviously taken thousands of years to develop into how we communicate today. So today we obviously, you know, we text, we tweet, Instagram, post, video, vlog, whatever. Given that we now live in the digital age of communication, I'm going to call it, um, we are communicating more instantly than we ever have before. Obviously, you know, a notification comes up on your phone, you can open it straight there and then. Um, there's not a lot of waiting um, to communicate these days, which is obviously how it's changed over time as well. So. I got to thinking of typography, um, so back in those times we used to communicate with symbols and then we added more additions to those symbols to make it more complex so that we have more words. But now I got to thinking about, right, if we need a message instantly then we need to make letter forms simpler. So from that I created, um, or I did some typography experiments. I created a typeface using a wicked software that I downloaded. Um, I only had to pay £25 because it's a student, but it's called FontSelf. I'm pretty sure it's called FontSelf. Mine has gone blank. But yeah, it's super easy. You use it with Illustrator. Um, and I basically just it's just tracing your handwriting and you make a font from it. So that was really cool. Um, and I've pretty much been doing it all week for my ISTD as well. Got myself and my family members to write the A to Z in their normal writing pace and then I did tests to show them like that's really annoying to show them like quicker um, to see like how quickly they could write it and how then I analysed how quickly the letter forms changed um, or like what things were being missed out of that um, sorry I'm going to blame living in London <laughs> on those uh, those background motorbike noises but yeah um, so I'm hoping if I drop the typeface in somewhere then you'll be able to see like the difference um, in the glyphs and um, just the anatomy of type as we got taught in first year um, and how that's changed. So my problem now is how, why am I going to use this typeface? How am I going to communicate to the world that maybe this is the new alphabet? Um, I'm not saying it is at all but it's just something I'm exploring. So obviously um, the plan was to make books, that is, uh, print design is like one of my favourite things about doing graphics, um, but obviously given we're not at uni anymore, I don't really have the facilities to um, better my project I guess. So from this, what, oh, that's cute as me, um, <laughs> yeah, so what I'm doing now, because I wanted to make a book, as my final outcome, I have to show how you were going to excavate that book in order to read it. Um, so I have to do prototypes to show that, and then put that in my process book, if that makes sense. 
Um, so I've just been doing some tests with some like mini bookbinding experiments. I've just been doing like some really cute like little paper ones. The orange is the like front back cover and then the like peach is the other pages. So yeah, kind of like just fold out experiments. Um, ones like this. Just to see different ways that the page would fold or excavate. Yep. That's another one. Yeah. Okay, so this next one's gonna look really weird, but um, I kind of, using the tools that I have at home, um, or my dad's tools rather, he helped me create a, a binding block, I guess, <laughs> um, out of like two bits of wood and some clamps. Like literally, these usually hold our like garden, garden furniture together. Jeez, that was loud. Um, so yeah. Get some clips and a bit of wood and you're sorted. So these are my two books to come out of my um, block. I did them the same, these, sorry these two, um, I did them the same as how we would in uni. So you make your like signatures and then do the front cover with the spine and then glued it and bound it. <laughs> um, so this is just, this is the first one. It did actually hold, I'm so happy. Okay, so this is a French fold book where the pages, they look normal, but, um, oh, it's just so hard to see. But basically, uh, so the pages are like that, if that makes any sense. So you can't actually see what's beneath them unless you print on them. So my theory in this is the fact that if I had pages where you can't physically open it, then the reader is supposed to like slice open or like if I use perforated edges, then they can do that themselves. So that was book one, this is book two, and it's just like a book of different ways that the page could fold out. So it makes it more interactive for the, uh, the reader, I guess. So yeah, regular pages. Fold, <laughs> fold outs. Um, I try to do it different colours so that it's a bit more obvious. Half pages, regular pages. That's another French fold one, so yeah. Um, and then this one's just a really big, like if I had something really massive to excavate, then people could read it. So other than the book binding experiments and typography stuff that I've done, my week's been better than last week, yeah, for sure. But yesterday I took a day off just because I didn't, I just woke up and I just didn't want to look at the project at all. Um, yeah, I guess you have to have those days. It, I mean, like, even though I wasn't, um, I wasn't doing work, I was even, I was thinking about it and even that helped just... So maybe that's a little tip, take yourself away from the physical work and do just like mental planning. Something that I've just been going running or doing some home workouts to keep me, <laughs> um, to keep me sane I guess. So yeah, that's all I've really been doing when I'm not doing work. So I will probably see you all again soon. Um, virtually I'm, I'm thinking so i hope everyone is keeping safe keeping sane trying to stay creative <laughs> um yeah i think for me i've been chatting to quite a few people from class um and outside like friends as well so that's really keeping me going so um but if anyone wants to chat about their project like we're all in the same boat like, everyone's struggling so just um i'm one voice that if you want to if you want to come to that's fine um yeah, so guess this is it until the next one. So yeah, bye everyone.